The 20th of September will go down in the history books, being the date that Tadej Bogacá became the first Slovenian Tour de France champion. This landmark moment in the Tour's 117 year long history will also go down as one of the most unexpected finishes to a Tour de France. Solidifying his place amongst the Tour de France Hall of Fame, Tadej Pogacar managed to defy the odds and defeat the out and out favourite Primoz Roglic, culminating in a historic stage win on La Planche des Belles Filles on stage 20. Now crowned as the champion at his very first Tour de France, Tadej Pogacar has captured the cycling world. But before we discuss the triumph in Paris, let's discuss how he got into this position. Tadej Pogacar has been one of the most exciting riders of this unbelievably talented generation of young riders entering road cycling at the moment. He proved his talent when he won the 2018 Tour de l'Avenir. However, Tadej Pogacar only joined the World Tour in 2019, but has already left his mark on the cycling world. Joining the UAE Team Emirates lineup in the winter of 2019, the Slovenian talent proved himself by taking the win in his second stage race with the team at the Volta al Algarve, before going on to win the Tour of California in in the spring of 2019 at the ripe age of 20 years old. Tadej Pogacar notably made a name for himself at La Vuelta a España in 2019, where he took three stage wins as well as the young rider's white jersey, and on top of that, a third place in the overall classification. At the very young age of 20 years old, it was hard to not be impressed by the successes of this young man. Now aged 21 years old, Tadej Pogacar will become the youngest rider to win the Tour de France since the war. On top of this, it will actually be his 22nd birthday on the day after he crosses a line in Paris, so that's not bad for an early birthday present. On the unusual run-up to the Tour de France this year, all eyes were on the reigning World Tour Espana champion Primo Roglic, as well as Egan Bernal, the winner of the 2019 edition of the Tour de France, whilst Pogacar was considered more of an outsider for the podium. The expectations surrounding the young Slovenian were underwhelming to say the least coming into the Tour de France. Now that we have discussed his preparation for the race, let's focus on his team. Pogacar will be the only UAE team Emirates rider on the podium, but cycling is definitely a team sport. Tadej's UAE Team Emirates came into the Tour de France with big ambitions for GC with Pogacar, alongside the small stage win goals for the former European champion Alexander Kristoff. Despite the Norwegian's presence, the team was fully focused on victory. In fact, here's what our first yellow jersey of this year's Tour de France said about UAE's approach. So uh, there will be a lot of races, and uh, but and, uh, for sure Tour is always the biggest race, and uh, I want to, to be in a uh, decent shape of course uh, so uh, that i can at least fight for a, a victory but uh, but uh, our main target there will be today projector uh, for the gc so uh, mainly we will protect him as our main rider. The team wasn't on many people's radars coming into the Tour de France, as most cycling fans honed in on Team Ineos and Jumbo Visma. By Tadej's side was a strong troop of climbers, including David de la Cruz, a former Welter stage winner. The Spaniard would prove to be the strongest man in the later mountain stages at this race. However, a crash on the opening day in Nice would set him back physically. Similarly from Slovenia, Jan Palanch was one of the stalwarts in the steeper inclines. Two riders who won't be there to celebrate on stage 21, however, will be the Italian duo of Davide Formolo and Fabio Aru. This formidable double act was supposed to be the key mountain helpers for Tadej Bagaccia, but the racing punished them harshly, ending both of their races within the first 10 days of racing due to crashes and injuries. We may be forgiven for wondering how Pagaccia would have performed if Aru or Formolo stayed in the race without their misfortune. The unsung heroes nevertheless will be the engines of Marco Mercato and Virgot Stockelengen. Having some rulers around you is vitally important in a grand tour as anything can happen on the road. Road. Speaking of which, let's finally move on to the race and how Pogacar won his maiden Tour de France. It sounds cliche, but you can't win the Tour de France in the first week, but you can certainly lose it. Luckily, the first three stages were a calypso of Tour de France chaos, allowing Pogacar to keep his head low on the stages around Nice. Stage 4's finish, however, to the summit of the Category 1 mountain Ossia Malette was a highly anticipated rendezvous for anyone wanting to contend for the Maillot Jeune. The climb to the line may not have proved to be as decisive as we had previously thought, but the Alp was the scene of Pogacar's first move towards the podium. Just as we thought coming into this race weeks ago, Jumbo Visma patrolled the race and brought the pre-race favourite Primoz Roglic to the fore, courtesy of Sepkus and Wout van Aert, most notably. Despite their astronomical efforts to weed out the peloton, a large group came to the line to contest the Win. Amongst that group was the young sensation Tadej Pogacar who kicked all the way to the end, bringing him to a second place finish in the process. 
Now wearing the white jersey, he began to smell blood, capturing discussion from around the globe. The seventh stage of the Tour de France looked pretty inconspicuous in the race's roadbook, but it was far from an easy ride as the riders headed through the Tarn region of France for the second year in a row. Just like on stage 10 last year through this region, it was the winds that played a leading role in this tragedy as the race split up within the last 20 kilometers as Ineos Grenadiers pushed on. On the other side of the race, Tadej Pogacar found himself on the wrong side of the group. He drifted into the group whose gap kept on growing towards the finish in the town of Laval. Pogacar trailed in the group with Richie Porte as well as Mikel Landa. Despite the efforts of Marco Mercato to bring back the group of race leader Adam Yates and Primoz Roglic, Pogacar seeded 1 minute and 21 seconds on this day, shedding his white jersey to the reigning champion Egan Bernal. At the end of the day though, Pogacar fell down to 16th place in the overall standings. Pogacar was never one for letting the disappointment at the previous stage get to his head as he bounced back on the first Pyrenean stage the next day. A breakaway was allowed to move away from the peloton to sweep up the day and its stage honours, but the real action was behind where Primoz Roglic followed every move from his rivals and early favourites. Despite this, Pogacar was allowed to roam free ahead of Roglic's group of favourites, as Yumbo granted the UAE rider some time back from his crosswind errors on stage 7. Whilst the French riders set their sights on a stint in the Maillot Jaune, Pogacar's gap dwindled on the road. The gap came to 40 seconds on the line, and Tade managed to climb back up the GC ranks, moving himself up to 9th in the overall stage. Standings. Stage 9 from Pau de la Rance will be earmarked as the beginning of the Pogacar era of this race. Tadej Pogacar made a huge leap forward in this Tour de France by taking his first stage win at the race in style. On the run up to the line, everything was going to plan for the Slovenian. On the final climb of the day, La Marie Blanche, Pogacar rolled the dice and launched an attack, dragging Landa, Bernal and Roglic forward. The group pushed onto the summit of the climb, where Pogacar almost hit the deck after colliding with his fellow countryman Roglic. After regrouping with the sole leader, Mark Hirschi, the group rolled into the finish into La Rance with a healthy advantage. By sitting in the perfect position on the build-up to the final sprint, Pogacar launched at the perfect time, springing him ahead of Hirschi and the future yellow jersey wearer Primoz Roglic. By taking the win, he clawed back 4 seconds on Roglic, propelling him to 7th in the overall standings, 44 seconds behind the headline act, Primoz Roglic. After surviving the transition stages through the west of France, the GC riders would battle it out yet again on the slopes of the Prix Marie volcano on stage 13. After the breakaway was allowed to take the stage win, all eyes looked down the mountain to the erupting GC fight behind. Pogacar and Roglic took the opportunity to make a move on the likes of Bernal and Quintana, who were still considered as the hot favourites for the podium. After a nail-biting finale that saw Bernal lose his white jersey, Pogacar and Roglic rode strongly in the final kilometre and came over the line together, gaining time on their rivals in the process as the Slovenian double act led the GC race across the line. In light of all the drama on Prix Marie, Pogacar climbed up to second in GC, reclaiming the white jersey, all while sitting 44 seconds in arrears to Primoz Roglic of Jumbo Visma. Despite a hectic day into Lyon the following day, Pogacar held on to his second place in GC as we headed into the 15th stage. The destination was Le Grand Colombier, and the plan was set from the beginning, an all-stars duel on the finishing climb between those sitting at the top of the GC standings. That did indeed happen to some extent, but the cast was rewritten as Bernal and Quintana cracked very early on the climb, courtesy of some arduous work from the team of Jumbo Visma, as Roglic sought to make the climb as hard as possible for his competitors. Whilst Wout van Aert put the chances of Roglic's rivals to bed, Tadej Pogacar still hung around the group in an all-white UAE skin suit. The group may have thinned out, but this was just a warm-up act for the Slovenian showcase that Tadej Pogacar and Primoz Roglic performed in the final 200 meters of Le Grand Colombier. Pogacar had a real spring in his step, launching himself ahead to take his second stage win of the race, closing out the second week of racing with yet another victory, as he gained a slender four second advantage on Primoz Roglic. After showing himself briefly and stretching his legs on the finale to Villa de Lens on stage 16, every GC rider knew that stage 17 would be an incredibly important stage as they climbed to the top of the Col de la Loz. The climb did not disappoint, acting as the theatre of broken dreams for many riders looking to challenge Pogacar for the podium. Whilst Miguel Angel Lopez placed a decisive attack of four kilometers to go, the the group whittled down to just Pagacha, Roglic and Kuss. Kuss carried Roglic away from the group, placing Pagacha in danger with 3km to go on the hardest slopes of this alpine climb. 
A tantalizing chase ensued between Broglic and Pogacar in the final kilometer of the climb. Pogacar never gave up, crossing over the line 15 seconds behind the yellow jersey of Primoz Roglic. Due to bonus seconds on the day, Pogacar's deficit in the overall standing stood at 57 seconds at the end of the day. So the stage was set for the final time trial to the summit of La Planche des Belles Filles. Sitting in the white jersey 57 seconds behind his countryman Primoz Roglic, Pogacar was preparing for the time trial of his life. After 10 kilometers of racing, the live timings appeared to be showing that Pogaccia had been edging in on Roglic's yellow jersey, eventually taking the virtual lead just as they hit the foot of the climb. Switching bikes just like his competitors including Roglic, Pogaccia drove up the climb impeccably, setting the fastest time with ease. He bettered the time of Jumbo Visma's Tom Dumoulin, but further down the mountain Roglic was looking defeated. Pale and exhausted, Roglic crossed the line 1 minute 56 seconds behind the stage winning time of Tadej Pogaccia, placing Roglic in second overall. After 20 21 days of fighting and battling through the wonderful nation of France, Tane Pogaccia finally claimed the coveted maillot jaune on top of La Planche. Sitting pretty in first place, he finishes the race 59 seconds ahead of the Slovenian road race champion Primoz Roglic and 3 minutes and 30 ahead of Trek's Australian leader, Richie Port. With the yellow jersey secured, Tane Pogaccia has won 3 jersey classifications, the white, polka dot and yellow jerseys. Nevertheless, the achievement of this young man does make us look back to the achievement of cycling's all-time great. Great, Eddie Maddox. Let's not place too much pressure on Tade yet though. He still has years to mature and perfect his craft as I am sure he'll be back yet again to fight for another yellow jersey. And we'll all have our fingers crossed that it can be just as exciting as the battle in 2020. So I am still not Kayla Buen and stay tuned to the Cycling Dane for more cycling content. And go ahead, let's all share our memories of this blockbuster edition of the world's greatest bike race.